Hey Eagle fans, Eagle fan Carl. This is going to be my preview and prediction video for uh, tomorrow afternoon's game against Chicago Bears as we get ready to take them on the wild card round in the playoffs and start the defense of this guy right here. Uh, you know, in many ways, it doesn't feel like the season has really started until we got to this point after the postseason success of last year. I think all the regular season was just about us all getting to the playoffs. And now that we've gotten there, which really is a surprise, probably wouldn't have thought a month and a half ago that that's where we'd be. But now that we're back, feels like the season can really start and we can really uh, get into exactly what's happening. And there's a lot of the national pundits, I think, that are not giving the Eagles a fair shot at this game. I think the local Philadelphia guys are, but I think a lot of the national fans are sort of writing us off, which is sort of where we were last year. Uh, but I think uh, there's some good reasons why the Eagles have a real shot at winning this game. One of the reasons why I do think that a lot of people are uh, downplaying the Eagles' chances in this game is because of the Bears' defense. The Bears have a solid defense across the board. They're top 10 in all the stats. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact the pressure they get with their, uh, with their down linemen. Khalil Mack, obviously the big acquisition they got from the Raiders, and how well he has played this year is a big deal. Uh, and then they're third in the league in sacks with 50. So one of the big matchups in this game is going to be Lane Johnson playing against Khalil Mack. Uh, that's usually the side he lines up on. I could see if the, the Bears might switch him over to the other side and go up against Peters. Uh, but, uh, you know, Lane Johnson has been playing it like a man possessed since he didn't make the Pro Bowl uh, earlier this year. Uh, the last few games he has been really solid. He completely shut down J.J. Watt in the game against the Texans. Uh, and I could see him doing something similar again in this game. Uh, and if that's the case, if he's if Lane Johnson's able to have the kind of game he's had the last couple of weeks and is back at that Pro Bowl level form uh, that he was at last year, then there's no reason why uh, the Eagles shouldn't be able to slow down that pass rush of the Bears, which is really critical to their success. And I would say across the board, our offensive line is playing better all, all the way across. Uh, the one concern I do have is the reports that, you know, Isaac Sayamalo hasn't played the last few weeks because of injury. Uh, and uh, wisniewski has been back in there. And frankly, I think the line's been better with Wisniewski. And the concern I have is there's reports now that since Sayamalo is healthy again, he's been getting the majority of the reps again this week in practice. And that the team is talking about starting him over Wisniewski, and that concerns me. I know why they're doing it, uh, because he's a bigger guy, and uh, you know Wisniewski's a little more undersized. And against the physical presence of the Chicago Bears defensive line, you want to try and get you know bigger bodies in there. Uh, but Wisniewski has just been playing a lot better uh, the last few weeks, and I think it's a real shame uh, that he's going to get replaced now. And that could potentially cause a problem. So that's something to watch during the game is if Sayamalu is really struggling uh, because that could become a problem uh, for uh, the offensive line. If you have one breakdown, it can become, cause, start to cause problems. I would prefer to see them st keep Wisniewski in there, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Of course, one way you can control a pass rush is uh, by staying committed to the running game. And I think that's what the Eagles... Uh, could try to do and probably will try to do. Uh, they've shown much more of a commitment to the running game the last few weeks uh, since since Foles has been in there. Uh, so I think the Eagles could do that again this week. That certainly keeps that pass rush at bay, and I could certainly see that that would be a way we could potentially have some success against the Bears. The other thing that it leads really into is the time of possession battle, which is huge. I'll get to the time of possession uh, in a moment, but uh, the one reason why I think the, the Warriors not really feel like the Eagles have a good shot at this, though is on the other side of the ball. It's our defense against their offense, and our defense has been playing a lot better. Uh, the stats don't necessarily show that uh, yet in terms of season-long statistics, but for the most part, the, the defense has really been playing solid football. And granted, yeah, they, they kept the Washington under wraps for the last week of the game, but even in the weeks before that, against the Rams' potent offense and against the Texans, I think they did a really good job in both those games uh, in terms of getting pressure on the quarterbacks in both those games. And uh, the defensive line has just been playing a lot better football. And uh, for that reason, I think the Eagles could really cause problems for the Bears' offense. Now, the Bears' offense is pretty much just average. Uh, if you look at their, their statistics across the board, they're pretty much average. Obviously, no big surprise, they're better at running the ball than they are uh, at passing the ball. Uh, and they're Points actually are a lot higher than what you'd maybe think, but that's also because their defense ends up scoring points on turnovers. Uh, so their scoring as a whole, uh, you know, from their offensive side of the football is probably kind of average as well, even though statistics uh, suggest it's better than that. That's looking at total points, not just points by the offense. 
Now, of course, when you do run the ball as well as the Bears do, that does also lead back to the time of possession argument, and that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, the one, uh, if those are the statistics on time of possession, so you can see these teams are two and three in the league as it comes to time of possession, and they do it in different ways. The Eagles do it with much more with a, a short passing game, whereas the Bears are much more of a straight-up running team. Uh, the Eagles do a mix of running and the short pass. Uh, but you saw in uh, the game against Washington how we had two prolonged drives where we were able to take up lots of time off the clock, and we did that with a mixture of pass and run. Uh, when the Bears do it, they pretty much do it by running the football. One of the reasons I do like our defense against their offense is just the fact that Mitch Trubisky is going to be playing in his first playoff game. There's a statistic I heard this week, I think, that really sort of uh, underscores this, and that's if you have a super, if you have two quarterbacks facing off, one of them has won a Super Bowl, and one of them is playing in their first playoff game. Uh, over the last ten years, uh, if you look at the wild card round, uh, the Super Bowl winning quarterback is nine and one against the first time playoff quarterback. Uh, now, if you go into the divisional round, it gets a little different, uh, but then presumably that guy in his first playoff game, that means they had to have gotten a bye to not have played in the wild card round. Uh, so the statistics are a little bit more uh, skewed in the favor of the first time quarterback. Uh, but if you look at the wild card round, which is what we're in, Super Bowl winning quarterbacks playing against first time quarterbacks, nine and one against them. Now, the one I think I did think is, is that stat, you know, misleading based on the fact that maybe you've got. Uh, First-time quarterback who uh, just sneaked into the playoffs uh, as a wild card and has to go on the road against a, uh, a home playoff team uh, and, and who has a guy that won a Super Bowl before. Uh, and there is some of that, uh, but if you look at the games where that, that wasn't the case, where the first-time quarterback is at home, like what we're going to have tomorrow, and the Super Bowl winning quarterback is on the road, uh, the Super Bowl winning quarterback is still 4-1 uh, in those games. The one, by the way, the one loss... Uh, that the Super Bowl winning quarterbacks have is Ben Roethlisberger lost to Tim Tebow uh, in a game uh, in Denver. Uh, so that's the one game uh, that, that, that's the aberration. The other interesting thing, though, in those four wins where the uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback was on the road against the first-time quarterback at home, uh, the one uh, game that does come up in that statistic then is Nick Foles uh, losing to Drew Brees uh, in Nick Foles' first playoff game. Uh, so, like I said, it's not the, the stat even still holds true uh, for the most part when you're looking at uh, the Super Bowl winning quarterback going on the road and playing the first time quarterback. And that's what we've got tomorrow. Uh, we've got our Super Bowl winning quarterback going up against a guy who has never been in a playoff game before. And I think that could be a big thing that could be in the Eagles' favor. And then, of course, one of the reasons why that's such a big deal is also then the turnovers. And the turnovers in this game are going to be huge. Uh, the turnover differential for the, these two teams, obviously in the Bears' favor, but that's because the Eagles were in such a hole early in the season. They've gotten better as the season progressed. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I think the Eagles really need to make sure that they win. They need to make sure that they win the turnover battle or at least break even in it. Uh, if they lose the turnover battle, I think it's going to be hard to beat this Bears team because they thrive on stuff like that. Uh, if you're able to deny them turnovers, uh, then I think we can give them a fair game. And I think that's what happens in this game. I think we do, uh, you know, we can get, if we can get Mitch Trubisky to make some mistakes, I think we can win this game. Um, frankly, nothing would surprise me in this game. I could see them blowing us out if we get into some turnover problems. I could see us blowing them out if we're able to rattle Trubisky. And I could also see a close game going either way. Uh, so, uh, like I said, nothing would really surprise me in this game. Uh, and frankly, for all the games this weekend, all the playoff games this weekend, I think you could make a case for any of the teams to win these games. Uh, so, uh, it should be a good weekend of football overall. Uh, but especially, I think the Eagles game could be a real entertaining game. And I think that I, I do like the Eagles' chances, though, in this game. Uh, like I said, nothing would really surprise me, but I'll go ahead and throw a score out there anyway. So my prediction for score is going to be Eagles 20, Bears 17. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, do you think the Eagles have no shot in this game? Are you following more in line with the national pundits? Or are you lining up with more of us uh, who may be a little bit more homers and looking at the game really at what the Eagles have done over the last few weeks and not necessarily over the first three quarters of the season when we were struggling? Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, obviously, check in afterwards, let you know what I think. And hopefully, we're talking about a trip down to New Orleans to play in the divisional round against the Saints. Until then, though, fly goes fly.